Hey, stay tuned. We're going to talk about some paint colors, how to choose the right paint right after this. Here I come to save the day. Welcome to Mighty House. This is a radio show for people with problems, home improvement problems, that is, and for people who want common sense guidance on how to build green and live a more sustainable lifestyle. Send an email or call into the show. The Mighty House crew is on the job. This is Mighty House. All right, we're back, and today we're going to talk about how to select the right kind of paint, not just the colors, but the right kind of paint. And, of course, we want to say thanks to the Niles Design District. Boom. Oh, we missed it. Dang. All right. Or you can go to uh, the MightyHouse.net, click on the Mighty House team page, and you can listen to other shows. You can also click on the Contact Us page, and you'll be able to find uh, the newsletter information right there. Sign up for the newsletter, and uh, you'll find out what we're doing every week, whether or not you tune in to any one of the 800 different things, places you find us. So That's right. with that, also click on the subscribe button, click the bell. That way you get notified. Next time uh, we post something new. And again, Niles Design District. Oh, we missed oh, it again. Oh. All right. It's terrible tonight. Yeah, awful, awful. Okay, right. so we're going to pick out paint colors, and, and we're painting not just the outside of the house like we got here, but even interior. This is a uh, full scope of whatever you're going to paint. Black is in, so you don't need a card that big. Just this Black one right there. Right now. Just those yeah. two yeah. colors, boom, done. Yeah. But yes. I don't know, around here they're doing white siding with the black windows and black trim. Boring. Which Mother Nature and ultraviolet light love black. So <laughs> go back to our series on how to paint the exterior and fix yes. peeling paint. Yeah. It'll help you. <laughs> All right. So depending on what you're painting will determine on what you need to purchase here. So we're talking about choosing it. So if we're talking about raw or new wood. Mm-hmm. We've touched on this before, it, depending on the species of wood. You may need a good acrylic latex primer, or you might need a good oil-based primer. Right. And where would we use the oil? The where would oil, we use Particularly the on cedar, uh, right. because it's super high in oil, natural oil. But on pine and redwood siding, you could get what a good quality acrylic latex. Same with your reverse board and batten and so on. But you could use so, oil on everything. You can't use latex on everything. That would be a correct statement, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, the best thing to do, too, also, especially on, like, lap siding or something that you're looking for a semi-smooth finish, uh -huh. you know, sand between coats with, like, 320 or 220 grit sandpaper. 320 might be a little too fine for exterior paint or, you know, even some interior. But usually 180 or 220 is is my minimum that, you know, I would not go below that. Right. Uh, 220, you can cover the scratches with paints and urethanes. So. Right. Uh, if you have painted wood or paneling, you know, and you want to change the color. Mm -hmm. So, again, we talked about it previously. You want to wash it down with a little TSP or soap and water is probably even better. Right. Because TSP is not good when it gets into the waterways. It causes fish problems. Right. So, but if you just roughen the surface with a 120 or 150 grit sandpaper and then just clean it off with a damp cloth, uh, if you're using a water-based paint, do not use a tack cloth. So you'll go into paint stores and you'll see these packages of tack cloth. Right. And it's for removing dust off your project. Right. Seems brilliant that somebody thought of that and they can make <laughs> some money. Right. But it contains wax. And if you use a tack cloth and then try to go over it with a water-based finish, it creates fish eyes. It, yeah. You know, there's areas it where the won't paint cover won't where the wax is. Right. So you're better off using a shop vac with a brush attachment, you mm -hmm. know, that little round one. Use that all the time. So that you can vacuum the surface off or just take a damp rag. Right. And wipe so, it down. And that and wipe it down. <laughs> Right. So the other thing, uh, if you buy those sponge mops and if you're doing walls and stuff, you can dip that in a bucket of water, you know, and then you, you squeeze out the, the water and then just go ahead and, you know, wash the walls down with that. And then that way you get all the dust off, it gets, cleans it up real nice, it dries fast, and then you're ready to go. Right. So. So on painting coated surfaces, if you've got some marks or stains, I mean, if you had stained paneling, mm -hmm. you know, original wood-looking paneling, and you wanted to paint that, 
um, your best bet is to go over that with an alcohol-based primer. Right. Because that'll bond to any type of oil-based finish. Um, but it'll also block any stains where there may be oil or other grease, anything that's kind of going to bleed through. Right. It'll stop that. So you want to use a, a alcohol-based primer, then go ahead over it with your latex paint, and you should be fine. Right. And, and that's the bins and the... What's yeah. the other one? What's the other one? Remember? Can't remember. No. What's bins? I, see, bins. That's why see. you don't bring these things up because <laughs> we're not promoting <laughs> brands here. That's true. Okay. And I couldn't think of bins in the last episode, and right. I can't think of the other one now. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Well, it'll it'll pop up when we're done. We'll we'll remember. Well, at least sure. they, got a, they both got a chance. Yes, they did. The other episode, we got it down first, and then we came up with bins later. And, and so now, don't, I just can't remember. That's fine. All right, cut. All right, along. Start it off. Next. All right, how about drywall? If we have fresh drywall, mm-hmm. it's just been hung and taped. Yep. Uh, it's not a product I see down in Florida, but it's a product that I know we used all the time in Chicago. USG makes a primer. That actually has a little bit of lime in it. Okay. You know, the, the brown lime, just like taping compound. Right. So you know how when you fresh drywall, the, the paper part will look different than where the drywall taping mud is? Yep. You'll have this a different stuff sheen. It has a little bit of mud in it. Okay. So when you go over all of your drywall with it, you don't get that change in you don't get that variation. Right. The other thing that's nice is it dries pretty firm, so it's easy to sand. Mm-hmm. It's it's you know, like a two or three mil thickness. It's not super thin. It actually builds up. So it'll fill pinholes in taping. Um, but you can sand it and then put your finish coat on. And I'm telling you, you get some beautiful walls. <laughs> Just beautiful walls. Beautiful walls. There you All go. right. But if you've already got paint on your walls, a good top quality latex paint, interior latex is going to do you just fine. But you want to get a good quality. And the yep. thing is too, again, sand before you start applying the paint <laughs> that's how you get all that smoky film off by you know you scratch up all the it's smoky just, film on the walls and get get rid of the, if you're in a new home like yeah you're, you know you just bought the house it's the last guy may not have so if you've got right. lumps and, and we always just say boogers on your walls right if you don't sand the walls you're gonna have new colors on the same boogers so you gotta <laughs> sand that stuff off it, scrape it off with your five and one tool do a little yep. patchwork in other words, painting's the easy part. It really is. Prep is the tricky part. Yep. And it looks so much better when it's been sanded and prepped properly. The paint job looks a lot better. So Yeah. It, so what kind of finish would you use on your walls? There you go. Uh, right here. We I do a lot of eggshell on all do the really? walls. Yeah. I, I like do the bathrooms egg- and kitchens? Pretty much everything. I might really? I might go I might go up to a satin in the bathrooms and the kitchens, but I, mm-hmm. I tend to use eggshell most of the time. And now they actually came out with those wa- uh, washable flats. Uh, and I don't know. I've tried a few of them, but you can still see where you washed if you've washed up a wall somewhere. Well, well again, the, the problem with eggshell has always been that if you don't prep your walls properly, there's still just enough gloss in there yep. to show off problems. Yep. That's true. You know? That's so, true. I think if you're not real, if you've got an older home, that you know isn't so perfect. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got an old house that's plaster. Yeah, you know, and it's been patched forty times. You know, <laughs> I would not recommend eggshell. I would go with a flat because yeah, it that will would... hide a lot more of that imperfection. If you have a brand new house and you had a really good drywall contractor, absolutely. And I mean, you know, you're talking about you use a lot of it for your right. clients. Oh yeah. So and, yeah. and our houses that go around with a halogen spotlight and we shine it across the walls looking for imperfections. Sure. Yeah, and but but that's the proper way to do it. And if you're just applying paint, if you're just going to install the paint, then you want to go with a flat color, a washable flat. That's going to be your safest bet. Right. Um, if you're doing all the sanding, the prepping, then you can go with the eggshell or, or a satin. The trim right. work, you would want to use more of a satin. Uh, what do you use? I, I tend to go satin on all the Yeah, more of a satin. Work. Never really high gloss or super high gloss, but you know, I might even go to a, a semi-gloss, but it depends on what I'm really shooting for. Mm-hmm. But, and we've had, you know, we've we've had some interior designers that have had us use the high gloss and and uh, you know the low gloss paints, 
on ceilings sometimes just because they're looking for that light bounce or some weird thing. I, I don't know. I, we've probably done it six or seven times at least that I can think of off the top of my head. Would that make so, a room look bigger, essentially? You use a lighter color for a, to, for well, smaller rooms? And make there is something to be said for that. Yes, that is true. A lighter color does make a room look a little bit larger, but it's still ceiling white. The regular ceiling white from probably every manufacturer has a high reflectivity in it. Yep. And it's a flat paint. Mm -hmm. So it actually does a great job of giving you reflectivity, mm -hmm. hiding imperfections in your ceiling, and still not being annoying on your eyes. Right. Well, it's like a diffuser. It's you put something in front of the light to kind of spread it out instead of having a bunch of high gloss beams. Like, right. like high gloss would maybe be more like a laser. Well, yeah, I mean, a, like right there over Ron's shoulder that yeah. I can't quite touch. Right, this um, Where it says high gloss, look at that eyeball yeah. in there. Right. And and the ceilings that we've done, I've never done any walls. I've had, no, watch, that. man, you just cut your hand off. Yeah. Um, so uh, the ceilings that we've done, we've actually skim-coated the entire ceiling, sanded mm -hmm. it, skim-coated it all again, sanded it, and then primed everything, put our first coat of high gloss on it, and then you stand back, like you said, with the light and shine a light across there. And then we go touch up all those imperfections that we see. Right. And then, and then we do it all again and start over again. So patch it, so sand it. So it's like it. the way you paint a car. I mean, you're literally yes. priming it, blocking it, priming it, blocking it, and yes. then going to your final color. Correct. And and, it's fine. Yeah. And does that cost more than a dollar? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> all right. The rest of no. my case. No, no but I mean, people need to know that. Robbie's not here. She's not, yeah. you know, how much is that? Right. Um, yeah, you you get what you pay for. So, if, yeah, if you want a high-gloss paint, be prepared yeah. for prep. Yeah. A lot of time. Again, installing paint's the easy part. It mm -hmm. really is. If I was right. to sand a gloss paint, would that take it down closer to an eggshell, or will it no. always keep its gloss mm -hmm. even if I sand it? It'll, it'll come, maybe come down to a semi-gloss, but it's, it's still going to be pretty You'd have to scratch the hell out of it because it's a, a, it lays down flatter and builds yep. a shell mm -hmm. on it, not like an eggshell. Eggshell literally has a textured finish like eggshells. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and some of that can be attributed to the roller you use. Right. You know, okay. like if you use a three quarter nap mm -hmm. roller with eggshell, you're going to have lumpy shells. Right. <laughs> yeah. If you can and get your walls nice and use a three eighths nap roller, you should have a, a really nice looking wall. And, and just to go back, when we do these ceilings, roll it, back brush it, roll it, back brush it. So we got one guy rolling, one guy back brushing to, oh, so yeah. that it lays down. Otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, a high gloss will have all that stippling to it. And uh, when you use a roller and it just it doesn't lay down right. So yeah. it, it's, it's well, very it's, intensive work. Oh yeah, and it's, it's a cool spray. look. Home roller. Yeah. It's a nice look, sure. In areas, I you know, like if you wanted something to pop, we use it more like a trim item, not like yeah. wouldn't be the whole ceiling in the first floor of a house. All the ones we've ever done were dining room ceilings. Yeah, and inside probably some type of frame or coffer. Correct. Yeah. Correct. You know, so that's we've... what I'm saying. It's making a statement. It's not. Oh, we do all the ceilings in high gloss. No, it's a. Uh, it was like three and four piece moldings. Crown molding right. systems we put in there, and then inside of that, you come in and then you do a like a bead, a screen bead around, that's uh, six inches in, and then the high gloss is on the inside, semi gloss on the outside of that, and it just it gives it so you know the, the yeah. texture and the difference. It it really makes that ceiling pop, yeah. and then and then nobody notices it because nobody ever looks up. <laughs> you know, you walk into how many people walk in and look up? Nobody does. Okay, yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, I, I walk in any building, I start judging. <laughs> All right, moving along. Moving along. Fiber cement siding. Okay. What would you want to use on fiber cement? I order it pre-painted, pre so uh, whatever color I'm looking for. All right, that's probably the best thing to do. Yeah. It comes with a 15-year warranty. Yeah, when it does that. But again, um, I'm going to be in a semi or even a satin. Semi gloss or a satin with something like that. But if I had to repaint it, maybe I didn't buy it. I bought it before they did all the pre finish. Then, it, then see, then I'm going satin. Okay, but water based acrylic latex. Oh, outside siding. I'm probably going mm -hmm. oil. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Call painter. <laughs> <laughs> 
hate painting. I do. I hate painting. <laughs> uh, he just, uh, Sonar just oh, launched God. Mountain Dew out his nostrils I know. with that one. I got, I got equipment over here, man. <laughs> Launch. No, I mean, you can use an You can just see it was like a flood, there, but... a bucket just getting <laughs> dumped. <laughs> nice. No, I mean, you can use an acrylic latex. You can oil, use an oil base. Either one is probably fine for that. Yep. Uh, but yeah, you just use, pick your finish and then just, you know, finish it, or treat it like we said in the, the, the how to do exterior painting. You want to just prep it like we suggested. Right. So if you haven't seen that one, go look for exterior painting techniques. That's right. We'll talk about that there. Okay. Um, it says don't use oil-based paint directly to fiber cement without priming because yep. you could void the manufacturer's warranty. Yep. So that's that's if you one got new. If you have, if you know, got if you have new, brand new siding and it only has that gray primer look to it. Yeah. Then you do need to use a good oil, uh, a good uh, primer. And, and follow manufacturer's su suggestions with that. Yeah. And again, you know, we've been doing this. I've been doing this for forever in two days. Ron's yep. been doing this forever in at least three a day days and a half, too. Yeah. I, a couple, yeah, a little starting. But anyway, long story short is, you know, they're constantly changing building materials. So even mm -hmm. though we know lots, there's still things we can miss. So oh, sure. please check the manufacturer on new products to, to be sure. And, and that leads us into the next line item, which is fiberglass doors. Mm -hmm. So, and now they're coming out with fiberglass windows, Marvin, Pella, you know, a bunch of them. They yeah, have a fiberglass frame. Yeah, fiberglass, yeah. Right. They're nice stuff. I mean, I used to use the, 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 the Marvin version. Yeah. And, and that, it's really a good solid product, but now you can paint these things. Whereas, you know, vinyl, yeah, they make paints for it, but, you know, you, you don't, may not want to paint them. Whereas the fiberglass. No, are, I mean, fiberglass windows can be painted. I don't think you should. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the all treks that Marvin uses, that stuff is pretty color, you know, firm and all that. So I wouldn't right. get messing with it. Mm -hmm. He starts to open up a can of worms because, you know, if you want to raise and open and close your windows and you got to do all the edges and all that. And then that's where it kind of starts getting going south. So. Right. Exactly. And it rolls right into vinyl siding then. Okay. It can be painted. My sure. very, very first house, I had vinyl siding. Uh, this is a long time ago. And it was horrible. And I bought one of those sprayers that didn't use air. It had a little pump, and it dropped it on a disc. Uh -huh. This thing literally slung paint. <laughs> <laughs> and your control of it was a little gate in the front. If you close the gate, it would uh -huh. sling it narrow. And if you open the whole gate, it would sling it this far. Yeah. It worked really well. Really? I could actually set it for about a 12-inch. And again, it was a, a lap siding, 8-inch uh -huh. lap siding. It was the look, but it's vinyl. I could stand on a ladder, spray a section that I could reach, and go right like this with the brush, uh -huh. and then just up and down the ladder, move over. It looked pretty darn good. How long did it last? I don't know. I was there two more years. I sold the house. <laughs> the house is still there. I don't know. I'm going by to see if I ever got repainted. Send me the address. I'll go check it out for you. Yeah. It got me through to, you know, it got me through to sale. Sure. Sure. Yeah. You know, it I didn't look bad at all. And then make sure you watch out the time of year that you're doing this. You don't want to do it when it's too hot because it'll expand and the, 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 it'll overlap. And then when it cools down, it'll open up and close a little bit. And then now you have all these areas that need to if be you touched photograph up. photograph that, I'll send you my neighbor. I have a house next door to me. Yeah. Vinyl siding, painted. It was yellow, painted it blue. Uh-huh. And on cold days, it's hilarious. <laughs> just like you just said, all the yellow joints come out. <laughs> that stuff shrinks up. Yep. Man, it was too warm to paint that day. <laughs> nobody cares. They don't go back and touch it up. No. Oh, you know no. Why? Because they uh, only bought the right amount of paint, and they have none left over. There you go. <laughs> all right. Concrete all right, block and brick. Concrete block and brick. I don't know, good masonry sealer and then, you know, just acrylic latex or I mean, you can still use an oil base if you want, but it's getting hard to find oil based paint. Yep. Um, I think you have to go to Wisconsin for it. Uh, no, they've actually started. There are some counties now in Illinois that are selling it again. Mm -hmm. So I actually saw oh, it yeah. at the store again for the first time in a long time. So, okay. uh, but it was banned here for a while and it may be Cook County that banned it. You know, the county did. I'm not sure exactly where it what it is, but I know we can get it locally again. Crook so, County? Yeah, exactly. So um, 
with that, uh, that you know, if you're painting the block and, and stuff, they have a bunch of different products out now uh, that are breathable. So you can put the paint on, change the color, and um, it will allow moisture and vapor, uh, water vapor, to come back through that paint. So it's vapor permeable. Yes. So if you're painting brick and block, you want to look for something like that. That way, the moisture that's in the brick doesn't push the paint off and cause issues like this, and then the whole thing right. starts peeling. So uh, make sure you're using Sonar, something like that. Sonar, are you messing with me? I'm standing in the same place. I look so much smaller now. <laughs> make me do that dance you do. <laughs> there's, there's no, he can't make you dance. It, it, it's oh, not yes possible. He can. No, I don't think he can do that. Because Rich can't dance. He, he no, can't dance. He can't like sing and he can't dance. I can ride. guarantee it. Wait, where'd he go? What it's are you like doing to him? Hey, dude, where'd you go? He took the elevator down. Oh, there he goes. Now he's, there he's coming back up. All right. So that's about all we have on choosing the types of paint. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us through our website at MightyHouse.net. Send yep. us an email at Rich at MightyHouse.net. I checked in. I had none today. Okay. Ron at MightyHouse.net. Robbie at MightyHouse.net. If you yep. want more tips on what to use with paint cans. There you um, go. There you go. But All I right. think we're pretty good for this week. Okay, cool. You almost had the whole close there. Take it. Take the rest of it there, brother. Go. Wow. I don't remember the rest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And for that... <laughs> Make sure you subscribe, click on the bell, and uh, go check out the Niles Design District. No, not quite. Almost. Almost. There we go. Niles there Design District. NilesDesignDistrict.com. And uh, post your questions and stuff. And with that, we'll say, keep it square and level. Keep it square and level. Bye, Rich. <laughs> bye. Hey. Bye, Rich. Have fun. Oh, that worked out really well. So far. <laughs> Uh, two cameras. Uh huh. People are gonna know. They're gonna question. How, how did he even do it? Right. What's he even doing? Magic. Well, I probably made more references to Chicago and Florida <laughs> in, in this episode and that time. accent. And start doing that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Located on Milwaukee Avenue, the Niles Design District is a home improvement destination for consumers, designers, and contractors. For those looking to renovate a kitchen or a bathroom, expand with a new addition, or enhance their curb appeal, Niles Design District in Niles, Illinois offers everything in one convenient location. It's your road to a better home.